Okay, so Easter is coming, so it's the time to prepare some stuff for the Easter. So Polish Easter is a big thing for us, so we just have to have a certain kind of food made. So for that, unfortunately, the preparation starts for me much earlier. And I will show you a step by step what I do and it's going to be a few videos in a row because it would be way too long video to show you everything that I do for the preparation of the Easter. So number one that I am going to need is, a, we are calling it a white sausage. It means that it's a regular sausage but it's not smoked, it's a fresh meat sausage. I'm making it uh, way earlier and when it's done I'm just leaving it for half a day in the fridge so all the spices with that meat are going to go through it and absorb and then I'm putting it in the Ziploc bags and I'm freezing it. This way when I need that sausage it's ready, it's good to go. Another thing that I'm going to prepare is my uh, ribs. I'm going to prepare the smoked ribs uh, because I'm going to use them for the white borscht. White borscht we eat for a breakfast of the Easter. So it has that white sausage, it has that smoked uh, ribs and also a smoked sausage and it is the best thing for Easter morning. Alright, let's get started time to make our white sausage. So let me explain it why it's called white sausage. It is because it's not smoked. It's fresh meat, it's uh, no cooked meat, it's just fresh meat and it's done because of we are using it directly for the Easter. So for that we're going to need three different kinds of meats. Pork belly, let me cut this in a smaller strips. The most important part, we have a lot of fat over here and I'm going to use that too. But that fat, I am going to grind this on the smaller eyes of the grinder and I will show you in the details. What I am going to need is the beef. So that, that recipe, first of all, is a recipe of my grandma and grandpa and they always added pork belly, pork shoulder and a beef and how much of the beef to entire meat that you're going to have one third of the beef so probably I'm going to need that much of the beef and I'm going to cut this in the smaller pieces so I can fit this in my grinder I think we're going to need is a pork ribs boneless it's a pork shoulder mm, it's really nice and pretty meat looking always good buy quality meat so i'm sure i'm not going to use the whole thing it's going to be way too much it's a good advice for you if you do not have a grinder and you are not willing to buy a grinder you can always go to a butcher shop and ask them to grind it for you they always will do it or any I like a Chinese store too they did it for me but since I'm doing so much of sausages at my house I have my own grinder I'm going to grind the fat on the smaller eyes here we go also with the fat I am going to add four garlic cloves so it's going to grind that everything together the fat is done. I'm going to pull this and exchange the. I have a bigger ice. Now we're going to grind the no fat meat. I have here around four 
and a half kilograms of the meat that is all grinded. So now I'm going to measure the salt. So number one, a big rule for that white sausage, there is no uh, curing salt. I do not use curing salt, not even a, a small amount for that meat because this is not going to be smoked sausage, this is going to be a cooked or baked sausage. So I do not use it and a curing salt. I only use a regular, not iodine salt. So, and I use around 13 grams per kilogram of the meat. So let's measure our salt, around 58 grams of the salt for that amount of the meat. What I'm going to need is the marjoram and the pepper. I already have a garlic, I added like four cloves of garlic. So since I have this uh, spice for the white sausage that I got it in Poland, I'm going to use this. You add like uh, two tablespoons, I like the, a lot of the spice in that sausage because that white sausage is all about the spice. That's the main thing that this sausage has the taste of. Here we add salt. Okay, let's dig in. All right guys, I have to exchange the bowls. It is too much to mix. I overestimated my amount of meat and the bowl size. It is roughly mixed. Another thing we're going to need for this meat is a cold liquid. So usually in all the recipes for the any kind of sausage they always tell you to add a cold water. I invented a little bit different recipe and I'm adding my own homemade cold broth. So here we go. How much? I uh, usually I don't like to add it too much. I want some liquid, but not too much. That should be like around 100 ml of cold water or your homemade broth. Here we go. Let's mix it to the end. I like to feel how the sausage comes out with that liquid in because it's going to feel totally different. It's not going to be so tight. So mix it really good with that liquid. I think why we add liquid is because it is allowing meat to glue it together. Put more. Okay. Mixed. So I'm going to leave this for some time in the refrigerator so it cools down and then I'm going to start putting them in the casing. The trick is to make sure that there is no air. Like you can see, the air is here. So we just have to close this and start pressing to the point where we see the meat coming out. Like, see, the meat is coming out. I want this meat to be up here and I can see some air in there. So I'm just going to pull it out until I don't see any air. Okay, there. I'm going to remove this. Okay, now up in here I have a casing. So, unfortunately there is going to be a messy job but it's all worth it. Alright, so find the entrance of the casing. There we go. And wet this. Ah, where's the beginning? Here we go. And just put this all in. The only thing you need to make sure you do not break your casings. If you do, you are going to have a sausage coming out.
to add too much, so this way I cannot close anymore. Here. So I have enough to loop this around so I can close that casing. That's all the thing about closing it, so your sausage won't come out. Hmm. Okay, here we go. up our sausage so depending on the length you want so for example I want the length like that let's measure both like this and twist them really gently here we go we have two pieces so keep going with the next ones the same try the same size to have and very gently because i can see i have a broken one so i don't want to break it more okay uh, twist all right and we got a twist okay here we go so you just have to gently twist don't force it if it doesn't want to go don't force it make a space in between here we go and you can see i have a breakage over here so let me try to save that okay let's twist okay i have a twist all right it's a little broken but here we go and i think i'm going to be able to have two more over here okay gently twist okay here we go and we have all those beautiful sausages ready and before we pack the sausage we need to do one more thing so over here I have this kind of weird looking tool it's like a picker so now because the sausage still might have air i'm not sure if you can see here this is a pack of air if we leave this like that the sausage will break when we are going to be either smoking or cooking it so now we've with this picker we need to poke like a tiny hose and release that air like like a quick tiny hose so what i do i just do like a really cute quick like that it won't escape the juices it's just going to release the air so the casing won't burst when you're cooking it or smoking so here's the four and a half kilograms of meat and I have this many sausages so I'm not going to use of course all of them for my Easter but I'm going to Put them into the bags and I'm going to save them whenever I'm going to want some like a fried sausage or cooked sausage I can pull them out from the freezer and they are good to go what I do at home I made I made like tons of sausage for the Easter and beyond the Easter even so thank you guys for watching if you liked subscribe and I will see you with the new episodes coming soon. Bye.